The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is day two wrap up. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. And this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We're live in Atlanta for the OpenStack Summit. This is our second year covering it. We've been covering OpenStack really since the formation. In fact, I was involved in some of the early Rackspace discussions pre-OpenStack. Uh, so it's been fun to watch. Uh, and my uh, co-host is Stu Miniman from Wikibon all week, Stu. It's been a great day. I mean, I think today's a little bit slower in terms of activity, a lot of, a lot of sessions going on. Uh, but in general, again, great content. We had Red Hat on. We've had some great guests. We had Digital Film Tree. We had uh, Jean-Luc Chatelain did a stop by. And, and uh, you know, we had, you had your, the Cloudcast guys, Sargali from HP, a lot of luminaries, David Wright from Solid Fire, um, Sage uh, from uh, Ink Tank, bought by uh, Red Hat. I mean, it's very clear, Stu, that the, the, the ship has sailed. The train has left the station. The horse is out of the barn. Whatever you want to use as a metaphor, right? It's, it's happening. OpenStack is the real deal. There's too much momentum behind it. It's going on. But the foundation's set. We still haven't heard that shot heard around the world. To me, it's, it's, it's still in the Kool-Aid stage. A lot of hype. And the Gartner analyst essentially confirmed that the trough of disillusionment is, is, is coming. Yeah, I, I mean, John, you know, last year the Cube covered the Portland show for the first year, and many people said us, you know, th that was an inflection point. You know, it, it's the visibility that the Cube give, gives, and obviously it was editorially important enough uh, that, you know, you funded us going to that show. Um, and you're right, there hasn't been that big move. It's not like with software defined networking, you know, you know, the $1.2 billion acquisition in NYSERA that everybody said, wow, that's huge. There wasn't, you know, some, some big announcement, some big acquisition, uh, but, you know, as as we've been talking about, that everything this week is about the momentum. Uh, you talk about how many people are contributing code, the users are getting involved, and the big vendors are really starting to put you know, the wood behind the arrow. So Sargali came on, John, said that they've got you know, 300 people here at this show. At the show here, at not, the show. not in their organization. Yeah, and so out of you know, 4,600 people at the show, you know, HP's got 300, Rackspace has you know, a huge contingency here, Red Hat's got a lot of people, you know, IBM, Dell, Cisco, uh, you know, even even uh, you know EMC, who's not uh, you know a, a, a very big visible uh, player in OpenStack and, and, and VMware, uh, you know both have a lot of people uh, at this event. So uh, you know people are attending, and you know what, what we say is CIOs, you know, are definitely paying attention to this trend now. Um, that they've either sent their people here or they're keeping an eye on what's going on now. Uh, and you know it, it's just about the, the the maturation and the transition from you know developing a platform uh, to to move. Moving as uh, uh, Alessandro said, uh, we need to talk about you know where are we penetrating different industries and use cases, and, and, and talk about you know you know breadth and scale of deployments rather than you know how much code is being contributed because you know we're up to, up to Ice House now. You know let let's not at Juno and beyond be talking about okay great you know turn the crank you know millions of more uh, code and, and lots of people working on it. It's you know where is this getting out? Where are the new business models that are being created by companies using this? Uh, and and where's revenue? happening. You know, Stu, one of the big things that I see happening today is just doing a tweet on CrowdChat around some of the trends I saw, just total cost of ownership, TCO. TCO is, it is a huge issue, it's undefined, and it, it, it really it shouldn't be defined at this point. It's, it's still an emerging market, so total cost of ownership is all about not just the purchase price of a solution or a platform, it's the overall cost of integrating it in, changing operations. So it's too early to tell, but we will watch that because when you start to see people talk about total cost of ownership, you know you've got a legitimate industry building. The second thing is... So John, can I comment on the TCO sure, piece? Sure. So, so if, you, if you look at the two TCO piece, the thing that's interesting is, in theory, you could take your existing infrastructure and layer OpenStack on top of it. Um, of course, it's, you, you, most people don't really have a scale-out architecture that's going to fit, but it's the operational efficiencies that are really going to help drive this. And that's been really tough in our industry because operational costs are, are usually a little bit softer, um, and you know, IT staffs are really overworked as it is, so you know, it, it is easier sometimes to 
to sell that solution where it has a, a capital thing. Uh, so you know, talking about when I go buy, do my storage refresh, it's easier to say, oh, there's a cool new technology in a box that I can buy because it is faster and cheaper and from a capital expense, uh, I, I know how to match it up. That operational uh, cost is a little bit hard to measure, but then that's really where the value for cloud in general and open yeah. specifically are. And, and, and that's a good point, too. Operationalizing new stuff is always a challenge, and, and that is a good telltale sign that you're not yet in the trough of disillusionment because you start to see, when you come out of the trough of disillusionment, that's when you start to see the operationalized kicking in because you got real growth going on and that means as a practice, as process, people change, all that. The other, the other thing I would say is a trend uh, is the consumption model. I just saw that on, on, uh, on, on crowd chat here. Seamless consumption. I think MetaCloud yesterday kind of teased that out. If you can automate the consumption, and I think that's what we heard from HP, off, off, off camera we heard from HP say, hey, we're just going to make it as seamless to consume as possible. Someone wants OpenStack, we'll go end to end and we'll provide all that automation. So it's not hard to acquire it. And you heard Sar Galai say, you know, I want to eliminate the inhibitors to OpenStack. And that's yeah. indemnification. Okay, we'll indemnify you uh, from any, any kind of legal lawsuits that are going on. So you're seeing that as a key issue. Creating a frictionless environment is key. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely, John. We we, we talked to uh, in addition to MetaCloud, Swiss Stacks looking to address that, and there there are projects um, that, that are you know making progress in, in OpenStack. So we look at what's happening with Horizon uh, for, for StackStorm. It was actually uh, Project Mistral uh, that they're talking about. Uh, so you know, right? How do we create that automation and orchestration layer um, that that's going to help simplify uh, everything that's happening at the infrastructure layer? So I got to say, Stu, one of my favorite interviews was uh, Alessandro from Red Hat, one's accent. Couldn't get his name right, you know, I'm always bad really? at last name. Really? <laughs> you know, yeah. Dave would have nailed it. Um, is um, really the perspective coming from Gartner is really interesting. He's so new at Red Hat, he's not yet fully uh, ingested into the system over there, which is corporate America, which is a completely different world. He's going to have a huge uh, wake up call in terms of how things are run differently. Maybe he's gunslinger at Gartner to the you know, strategy guy at Red Hat. I mean, that's going to be a fun job. It's just different, different, uh, different tactics. But it's interesting how they, he talked about the past. He said, hey, Cloud Foundry, whatever, you know? We're not going to address that. We have our own deal, they have their deal. We'll see you on the battlefield, essentially my translation. Um, but interesting guy, he sees the landscape. What do you yeah, think of yeah, that? Yeah, 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 John. So, you know, as an analyst, one of the things that we always love to do is really talk to those practitioners. You know, Alessandro had spent years, you know, talking to the end users, and it's the challenge of how do, you know, IT practitioners and CIOs ad ad adopt that change. And the line I love from Alessandro was, uh, he met with a VP of uh, infrastructure, and he said, I have so many challenges right now, it's so exciting, and, and that's what, you know, we need to be able to embrace that and find those new models um, and the people that are going to change it because there, there's too many in IT that are like, well, you know, what I have right now stinks, and my guys are, you know, buried with support tickets and they're not meeting the needs of the business, but, you know, hey, we're getting along with, you know, duct tape and bailing wire and bubble gum, uh, but we can keep it working, so let, let's just keep doing it yeah. and you're going to be left behind in the dust. I mean, kill me with that problem. I have too many requirements. We can't build it, but that's an issue with feature creep, I think, and I, what worries me about OpenStack is, is, is you don't want to see an op open project go off the rails. Well, it gets us off the rails by you know, weird agendas, getting forked, and I think that was a question that we were looking to this week, Stu, was you know, what are these big guys going to do? I mean, are they going to come in, quietly nip, chip away at, at, at the momentum to kind of pull it back onto their terms? Yeah, What's your John, I, I love uh, Boris from uh, um, Marantis. From Marantis was wearing a shirt last night uh, with uh, Heisenberg from Breaking Bad, and it said on it, "99.1% you know, pure." So, so that's what everybody's looking at. Is you, you know, if you look at the stack, it's. Are we forking it or are we taking what's there and we're adding on top of it? The challenge always is there with standards uh, and, uh, and, and projects like this that you, know, to you, know, you need to deliver the solutions to customers that are going to work. So in a d an ideal world, John, you know, you'd love to be able to say that you know, I just take this you know, kernel or whatever it is and, and deliver it. But I mean, even look at Linux. I mean, Linux has been around for a long time. You, know, that you can go to kernel.org and download that, but you know, most customers are going to take some distribution whether that be from Ubuntu or from Red Hat uh, or, or, 
or anyone out there because they, they need, you know, the, the, the packaging of it and the support and, you know, so, sometimes the, there's extra things that they want on top of it. So we're going to see that, you know, a similar maturation, even though there's a lot of differences and a lot, a lot of challenges that OpenStack is going to face, um, but it, it, it kind of does echo what we see in Linux, even though, uh, as Alessandro said, you know, hopefully we shouldn't have to wait 10 years uh, to see that first billion dollars, uh, you know, being made. It should happen much faster. You know, on a personal note today, one of my favorite interviews was the guy from uh, Digital Film Tree, which came on theCUBE, and, and he's more of an showcase customer for OpenStack, but it's not your typical enterprise, right? And what I liked about this guy was, the fact that he grew up in the Bay Area, was he's doing cutting edge software uh, development as a creative shop for in the film industry. And I think that was personal for me because one, I love the future of journalism, the future of film, also mentor the, you know, some of the young kids in the, in the community around that in, in Palo Alto. And that's, that's ultimately what's going on, Stu. I mean, it's just so interesting to hear how Hollywood's changing and that you're going to see the next George Lucas come out of the woodwork. The next young gun is going to come from this new generation of digital natives, artisans, using coding in Python, doing big data in real-time analysis, and actually doing creative work. When we start seeing that, then it's the future. So I think that was a personal note. What was your favorite? Yeah, interview? John, and to, just to comment on that, I, I do love it. You know, there's too, there's too many people. If they saw, you know, your industry is going to be out of business in a couple of years, they'd say, well, you know, I'm going to ride this, uh, you know, fair, th this merry-go-round until it comes to a complete stop, and then I'll figure figure out, figure out what I'm going to do. Instead, he said, you know, hey, I'm going to, you know, help, you know, you know, dive in here, do you know, software development, get my guys, uh, you know, coding on OpenStack, and, and be able to disrupt myself to to be able to move this going forward and, and create a new business. So uh, that was good. Uh, of, of John, I mean, you, you know my favorite segment was hanging out with a couple of you know, good friends of mine from the Cloudcast, uh, guys that have interviewed over three years, I think it's like 140, uh, mostly startups, some really cool people, a lot of them, uh, everything from the Swift Stack guys, uh, you know, through, through the DevOps piece, so, so synthesizing down. And, and you know what they said after doing all these interviews uh, for over three years, you know, basically the bottom story is, you know, cloud sucks, uh, you know, but it's, you know, the technology <laughs> problems are going to be solved. Hey, 100 it's something is not else. bad. I mean, they only have 3,000 and 200 more to do to, to meet, meet, the, meet, our, meet our record. Yeah, John, they, our they, pace, they, so. they actually said that, you know, two years ago they said, you know, we're going to take over the cube, and then they're like, forget it. You know, you guys, you know. Secretariat that, breaks away, <laughs> thundering Yeah, they, 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 they've got know? a lifestyle with their podcast and, and, you know, do it in their spare time. They know we're delivering value to the community yeah. uh, and, and, and digging in with, you know, broad spectrum. We so great to have them We will stay up on. late at night to get the stories, the metadata that comes out at the party, Stu. What did you learn last night at the party? Uh, a lot of good metadata flowing around, a couple cocktails, loose lips. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, John, you know, yesterday on the wrap up, uh, you know, I, I might have been a little down on OpenStack. I'm saying, you know, are we going to implode in 12 years? And, you know, I'm hearing enough stories about, you know, real people actually deploying them and just, people are hesitant to really share their stories, and that's what we you know, want to try to really extract here, is find those practitioners out there, get them to share their stories, you know, why this is important, why they're doing it, um, and you know, because you know, this is an important uh, you know, piece of the ecosystem out there. Uh, you know, cloud is you know, disrupting markets uh, left and right, and uh, you know, there's, there's, there's you know, so much going on with you know, Another stuff. good interview I thought was today was Sarkali, a uh, CUBE alumni, he's been on theCUBE, it was funny, we made him laugh and smirk and smile, and the HP so you don't see Sar smile that much because he is a, an operational leader at HP and, and I think you know, he's not a big grandstander and I, the reason why I like him on theCUBE is that he gets to kind of you know, talk about stuff that he's working on that we're interested in, certainly everyone else is interested, but he does it in a way that's not grandstanding and he doesn't get a lot of the credit. He laid down the tracks from uh, uh, the, the, the previous cloud stuff that was generated out within HP because the early cloud days was underfunded. Beery Singh had the momentum going and then he had a good team but was underfunded. When Sark took it over, he, he picked up where he left off and laid the tracks down. And so a lot of the success that HP's having today is from SAR. Now they have uh, Martin Fink in charge of it. He was from HP Labs, been a general manager. Meg Whitman is overseeing the whole thing. So you're going to see good moves from him. And I think you know, that, was a, that was good to hear him reiterate that the billion dollars is going to be spent. And that's, an, that's a conservative estimate, he told me. That's really more than a billion. That's just their kind of their press release number. And it's, and it's a real number. So 
Great to hear that from Sar. Um, yeah, John, and, and, and you know, we, we had Dave Wright on from SolidFire. So SolidFire is a company we've been tracking since they were in stealth. Gosh, gosh, I think it's been at least three years now. Um, you know, a company that you know doesn't make huge waves in the marketing uh, from a marketing perspective, but it heavily involved in OpenStack. Uh, don't know if Cinder would have happened without those guys. Um, you know, you you talked with uh, you know SolidFire, uh, eBay, and, and a bunch of their customers. Uh, you know, back at uh, in Mountain View earlier this year, uh, and you know. It, they, they quietly you know, released the first converged infrastructure solution for OpenStack today. So, uh, I mean, John, you know I, I track the converged infrastructure space really closely. Um, you know, got to gotta wonder you know, when uh, you know, EMC and Cisco, who you know, really lead that, that space, are, are going to jump in. You know, Oracle's here at the show even. Uh, heck, John, I even saw Google, uh, a couple people from Google here at the show. You know, it's like, so, you know, there, there's a lot of interesting things going on behind the scenes here, yeah. uh, and it's been, been fun yeah, to check Google it out. Certainly is interested in this, though they're probably in some alpha geeks doing some recon, but you know, I, I was really enjoyed talking to Jean-Luc Chalet, and he basically called it right. This is a DevOps show, Stu, all right? This is a DevOps show, plain and simple. This is all about DevOps. Um, great commentary from him, talking about some of the big data challenges. The bigger the data, the bigger the privacy headaches. The bigger the data, the, the bigger the security risks. This is a huge issue that's going to infiltrate the OpenStack community very shortly. And also, his comment on pure storage. I asked him directly, do you think pure storage can be, be the next EMC? Flat out, no. So it's, <laughs> he's in the storage business, so uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that, Stu. Okay, Stu, any final parting thoughts for day two? Uh, so, uh, you know, like last night, there's, there's a bunch going on in the community last night. It, 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 it's fun to get together with this crowd. You know, the, the, the geeks party well. Um, you know, Atlanta, it's been humid, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it, it's nice. Everything's, you know, mostly in walking distance. Uh, and we got another half day uh, of some really good guests tomorrow that I'm looking forward to. Okay, this day two wrap up here on theCUBE. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Stay with us uh, and good night.